as an advanced, or we'll say someone who's been training, doing things quote unquote, as optimal as they can, based on the information that they had, the knowledge that they've acquired, the experience, et cetera, where over time, as you get better at performing your sets, you may require less overall volume to actually see progress just because there's more intention with every rep you're doing. You're able to take sets closer to failure, that sort of thing. Whereas you look at a beginner, and I would love to for you to elaborate on this. Do you think a beginner actually requires training to failure? That's the question. And the reason I ask this is because the mm -hmm. practice is important. And how do you practice? Yeah. Yeah, you got to do multiple sets. Also, if they're getting too close to failure and they don't know how to do that, could there be a potential risk of injury? But maybe you want to elaborate based upon my thought. If there. we're talking a beginner, yeah, they're like, okay, there's no skill set there yet. Like, just like any other sport, right? Like weightlifting is a, is a skill. I know like some people look at a curl and go, there's not a lot of skill to a curl. Like yeah, there is some skill there. You still have yeah. to learn the, the movement pattern. So it's like when you have a beginner, you don't want to push the intensities. It's not like you're going to take a peewee football player and go, hey, man, I want you to go play high school right right now. Right. So that's like training to failure in a sense. Like yes. you're going to get crushed. You're going to get hurt. Yeah. So it's like, hey, you're peewee right now. Let's just let's let's learn movement patterns. That's it. We don't have to worry about going to failure. It, it's not about muscle development in my mind. It's more like skill, skill, developing skill. The muscle will come in time. The intensity will come in time as you advance. So it's like, okay, once you have form technique down and, and, and you're confident in that, then it's like, okay, now we can start like, okay, let's see if we could, you know, increase intensities, whether it's like learning how to push closer to failure. And in my opinion, that's a skill set. Because right. you have to have composure and poise when you're grinding those last rep or two to maintain like good technique and form so you don't get injured. So that's a skill set in itself. So it takes time to learn that, but also increasing intensity through load too. Like you increase the loads, you know, you've probably seen this. You see people increase load in the gym. You're like, oh, they shouldn't even be increasing that way. Right. right there. Yes. So there's, it's like, you have to be conservative in a sense with that. So you maintain the same type of composure throughout. And that's where you see a lot of people go wrong is it's just, they're trying to get too far in front of themselves when they really, they should be going from like peewee football to now we're kind of going to junior high, maybe high school, college, and then into the pros. But as bodybuilders, again, it's almost like we're only in this bodybuilding world. And that's how our mentality is more is better yes. and faster is better. When it's almost like, well, look across at any other sports or any, anything really, like you look at a banker, right? A banker ain't going to be a banker, like coming out of high school, unless he lands the job, you know, cause it's his, his dad works for the bank. Right. But you got to work your way up to get to an, a more of an advanced level. Yes. Yes. That makes sense. And I think like, like just to add a few extra points here that come to mind with respects to the, the practice component, like having to develop that skill where there's been an, there's been this argument or a case made for, oh, a beginner can progress off just one set because they're a beginner. Like they can potentially stimulate muscle growth with just maybe one set per exercise, I, which yeah, I can, I, mean, I, I, I can, yeah, I can understand I that. If there's a, some degree of effort, not saying it's failure, but even if it's you're moving some weight from A to B and you've never done that, like chances are you're going to see a very positive result from it, even if mm. it's just one set. Because what were you doing before that? Right. Nothing. And then, then the question becomes like, well, if I'm a beginner and I look at like someone who's saying I need 10 to 20 sets per muscle group, well, that beginner is probably not ready to be doing 20 sets a week especially mm. on all body parts, because now they're in the gym six days a week and they're doing a gazillion sets and chances are half of those sets, there's no skill behind it. So it's almost yes. like, okay, where's that middle ground where we can, we need to have you doing enough to practice that skill, but not so much where you're getting fatigued, yes. you know, and the results, it's like, who cares what the result is? The result will follow you once you get all that skill and you know, okay, more or less like, what you're capable of doing from a performance standpoint and what you're capable of, of like, as far as your recovery, mm -hmm. you're finding a sweet spot and that sweet spot's going to change as you move through time because you're going to get more skilled. So personally, like, yeah, I don't need to do five sets on an exercise. I can do two or three hard sets and I feel like I've done five sets and chances are my form and my ability to grind at higher RPEs and yes. my ability to increase load and reps, that type of thing. I'm going to be more guided than someone who's just first stepping foot in a gym. So I don't require as much set volume to kind of generate the type of results that I'm looking for. I feel like there's this period where 
you start to realize that like you start as a beginner. Okay. And if you do things like you had just mentioned where it's like, okay, let's approach this in a smarter way. Like we'll start with one, you know, and then as time goes on, okay, now we'll let maybe add an extra to practice and you know, all that good stuff. We just, you just talked about, I'm not going to go into it, but where then you get caught in this or potentially a lot of people get swept up in this uh, more is better on the volume side of things. Whereas now they're somehow they've worked their way up to, 20 sets per body part per week, right? And then as you've gotten more advanced and you realize, okay, intensity of effort, you're getting better at that component of the skill of pushing yourself. Then you start to realize, wow, I don't even need that much. And to make progress and to see progression with my lifts and all that. You get, you get more confident. It's mm. just like, you know, it's like, again, like any, I watched a documentary on Nolan Ryan. I don't know if you know who Nolan Ryan is, but he was like a pitcher. And like this guy pitched for like, close to 30 years in the major leagues. It's unheard of to mm. pitch that long. Yeah, that's and his longevity. fastball is one of the fastest fastballs of all time, like well over 100 miles per hour. Wow. And when he first started out, like his mechanics weren't all that, that great, meaning he didn't have as much control. And it wasn't until, I forget, I forget what team it was, but he went from one team to the next. And they didn't have pit, like pitching coaches. That was kind of unheard of when he was starting out. But he got to this one team and there was like, there was actually someone who taught him mechanics, like how to throw the ball with more quality and efficiency, like just really cleaned up the way his delivery was. Well, he got like, obviously he got more control on his pitches and he was able to last longer in games, that type of thing. So his overall quality and efficiency and improved because he improved mechanics. So again, that's why I like, I'm really big on the skill component of lifting, even if it is a curl. Even if it's a wrist curl, like there's still like yes. a skill level that you can actually learn to move from point A to point B a lot more efficiently, which, you know, you remove momentum, you remove leveraging. So, you know, the muscle you're intending to target, it's actually doing most of the work, if not all the work. And you're just getting more out of the movement because of that. So you might not need, like a bigger might might need five sets to get the same amount of quality work. As someone like myself who's doing two or three sets, like in the end, the stimulus is probably the same. It's just, I'm being more efficient. I'm going yes. about it. So that's kind of the difference. So that's that what sense. I'm trying to teach my athletes in kind of every time I go on a podcast or whatever, it's like, you know, I'm kind of big on the efficiency. And that's why I'm like, hey, let's not just look at like this guy over here that's chirping 20 sets a week. Like, let's, yeah. let's look at other sports. Like they're doing things right. They know how to basically get the most out of their players, you know, from a performance and recovery standpoint. A lot of things are cyclical in this field. And I could be wrong, but I'm going to throw this out there. I think in the next year, the low volume, high intensity approach is going to get, it's going to make more noise. And that's depending on who's preaching it, right? Like usually right. it's like whoever's chirping the loudest out there. And the most, it's going to draw more traction. So I kind of just see like, you know, the Ben Howards of the world, right? Like they've been training three days a week for...